This time in the Autoetic Garage, we do a Hemi engine swap in this bad boy and get it back on the road. Check this out. Howdy, I'm Jason, and that's Pinto, and I'm really excited to get started today on a new project. This is the 2009 Dodge Ram 1500. It's got a 5.7 Hemi in it that's hurt real bad, and a typical valve train failure. By the end of this video, I'm going to be excited because we're going to be driving it again with the new Jasper Engines and Transmissions replacement engine for this thing, and this is going to be the start of an amazingly fun project. But first, the backstory. The truck was originally built by Peterson's Four-Wheel and Off-Road magazine for the SEMA show in 2009 and called Project Black Sheep. It has all kinds of cool little bits added to the suspension to accommodate the 37-inch tires, kind of. A custom front bumper, Banks exhaust, catskin leather interior, and a 4.6 to 1 transfer case out of a Jeep Rubicon, which requires a unique shifter to engage. Over the years, the truck has been hammered on by numerous magazine editors. I don't think there's a straight body panel left on it. And then it was given to the video production team at the Enthusiast Network. And that's when I finally got to start driving it as a support rig for Dirt Every Day with Fred Williams and Dave Chappelle. After a couple of years of that, the engine finally failed and I bought it from the company because I fell in love with it. And so now that you know a little bit more about the truck, let's get this thing on the side yard and get started. I mean, I can't wait. Uh, come on. Is it budging? No, I think that's me. I'm budging. We have to come up with a different plan. Pinto, why are you helping out here? Come on, Pinto. Give me a hand. What, you, what good are you, Pinto? That's not helping. All right, I got an idea. Winch in. Come on, truck. Hi, Pinto. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Getting to do an engine swap and use your winch in the same day. This is good. This is a good day. You were not very helpful, Pinto. So just to set the tone on the mechanicals of this video, Jasper recommends that you have a qualified mechanic do this install because they offer a three-year, 100,000-mile warranty on the engine. That, combined with their 75 years of experience, had me confident I made the right call. I picked Jasper engines for this truck to show both the regular vehicle owner like me and shop owner looking for a super reliable and easy option to offer their customers in need of engines or transmissions that this is the best option. And later I will show you exactly why with some cool videos detailing the re-engineering and upgrades they made to my engine. You simply go to the website to find a local installer and set the process in motion. Next up, a truck appears with an awesome dude like Mike here with a crate full of goodness. Once the swap is done, the old part gets loaded up and hauled away. Easy as that. But for now, join me on this journey to breathe new life into this cool truck. I've never done a late model engine swap like this before, so this is new territory for me. But I'm going to approach it just like I would any other mechanical task. One step at a time. I first get my tools organized and my workspace is ready. Now it's time to attack the truck and drain the coolant from the radiator. And then let the oil out of the engine. Since this truck sits fairly tall, I decided to take a little extra time and remove the front bumper so I can get to the rest of the components behind it. All right, so for our first tech tip for this uh, project, I try on anything to keep my bolts, nuts and bolts organized. So the, what I'm gonna do for this project is right now, this pocket right here is, you know, first off, have your workspaces ready. So I have, you know, um, some workspace there, workspace there, I got my tools on this bench there. Um, this pocket right here is now all front bumper skid plate and those bolts I know now live for that. Here's another little tip. Any Tupperware or type of baggies will do, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these things I've you know accumulated over the years, these little just containers, and I'm gonna put nuts and bolts in those and then just label those the different uh, areas, you know, after I start filling up all these containers. And uh, that way when I know, when I'm putting this thing back together, I'll have an idea of what should go where. 
And so when I have my extras, I'll know where they came or should have been. The plan was made to remove the entire front end of the truck in order to have better access to the engine bay. All right. Boy, this radiator looks really wimpy for this bigger truck, but I don't know. We may have to research uh, replacing that. And, of course, it ports off. Imagine that. Fan shroud. Definitely gonna replace that fan clutch. I'm gonna try to save the Freon and just move this out of the way. Now look at the access I have to this engine here. So this is just gonna make my life a whole lot easier in disassembling and yanking this clump out of here. Let's keep going. Then I just worked my way around the engine, disconnecting everything I could find unbolted the intake manifold and tried to take it off. Got stymied by that last connector in the back. <laughs> but then I was able to get it out of the way. Hooked a chain to the top of the engine and started lifting. Eventually, the old Dodge gave up the injured Hemi, and I was able to get it secured on a dolly for its final goodbyes. All right, and now it's time to introduce the beauty to this beast. Now, this is the Jasper Engines and Transmissions 5.7 remanufactured Hemi. Now, it's not just a rebuilt engine. This thing has been redesigned in a couple of the core areas that have been known to break in the past on these things, the weak spots. And what I like about that company is that they go in and say, hmm, let's see if we can fix that, and they do, and this is what you get, and this is that peace of mind that I want to stuff inside here, because this thing's going to take me out in the middle of nowhere, and I don't want to second guess a junkyard engine or anything like that. Here are a couple of the main areas that have been upgraded on the Jasper 5.7 Hemi. First up are the head gaskets that are now multi-layer steel and offer much better protection against leaks, amongst other features, and are just a far more robust part. Plus, Jasper re-engineered the entire piston for this engine, incorporating a graphite-coated and much larger skirt area to protect against piston scuffing at startup. And they added two additional center skirt drain backs, so the engine will use less oil as well. They also incorporated a larger pin bore with a full floating pin that also reduces scuffing. Then each engine is put through a 15 minute live run test, which leaves no doubts to the quality of the build. Remember, this is not the cheap way to replace the engine in this truck, but that's not the point here. In my opinion, this is easily the best engine, factoring for reliability and peace of mind for the many years and thousands of miles I'm going to put on this vehicle in the future. And now what I'm gonna do is take valve covers, coils, uh, all of the sensors off of the old engine, the original engine, and transfer those over. Jasper offers an installation kit that's super helpful and comes with almost everything you need, like spark plugs, filters, hoses, gaskets, belt, and even a new water pump. So I'm gonna get in and start pulling sensors and all of the things off of this, transfer them over to the new engine. And while this part of the process was actually kind of relaxing and fun for me, I think it's worth mentioning here that where I live in Southern California, we were experiencing a record heat wave of temperatures well over 100 degrees every day. Not complaining, but wanted to explain why I look like a sweaty mess in this part of the video. Now that one broke right off and I kind of anticipated that. I was told by somebody, actually a friend of mine on Instagram said, Be, just buy new manifold bolts, and I did. No big deal. So we'll just get this thing off. So after transferring all the necessary bits over to the Jasper engine and bolting on the new water pump, it was time to put it on the hook, get it off of the engine stand, and install the flex plate, making sure to lock tight and torque all the bolts to spec. 
And that does it. We are now ready to stuff this thing into place. Let's get this done. Whew. Let's come down. As you can imagine, doing this solo took a bit of iron wrangling to shimmy this thing into place. But I was able to improvise an extra helper with a ratchet strap, and with a few gentle adjustments, the engine fell into place with surprisingly little drama. Like, this is just too weird. I can't even handle this. And the torque converter spins freely. This engine is mounted to the transmission. I'm tripping. But I'm super happy. This is my super happy face. Whew. Super hot, but super happy. Like seriously, what the heck? I'll take that when it happens. Now it was time to install the engine mounts to the block. I left them off to give me more room to maneuver the meat up to the transmission, which seemed to work pretty well. I did, however, execute a pretty good knuckle buster and sprung a leak in my finger. But what big project isn't complete without one? Okay. Other than the wound, a little bit of blood, you know, working on cars. Um, I think it's time to lower this down onto the mounts and see if we got this. And oh, jeez! Are you kidding me? It's working. Ah. <sighs> Let's get the engine bolts in. One bolt. This next one's gonna take a little bit more love here. There we go. Can you believe this? <laughs> I can't. I can't believe this. I just can't. I can't believe this is going so well. I'm about to pull the chain off of this engine. We now can lower this thing onto its own weight, hook down, undo the chain. I'm just gonna take a minute to appreciate this moment. Engine's in. That went awesome. Well, yesterday was an awesome day. That thing went in like a dream. Everything is looking really good. Today is gonna to be a fun day. We're gonna put intake manifold, exhaust manifolds, uh, all the coil pack and start just assembling the thing and get it running. So um, first up, let's get this intake manifold put together. We're gonna just transfer over some of the parts to the new one. Yes, I bought a new intake and they're not cheap either at about $400. Jasper recommends this because after an engine failure, it's very difficult to tell how much debris might have been kicked into the original. And since these are complex, variable length runner intakes, it's safer to replace than jeopardize a new engine install. Then it's more fun assembly time. Exhaust manifolds, done. Coil packs, reattached and time to heave the intake into place. And here we go. Hey, Pinto. <laughs> the AC compressor bolted back in place and I still managed to keep the system sealed. So no need to recharge there. Then there was a bit of bad news from the Dodge dealer. My new power steering pump didn't come in, so I had to reinstall the old one for now, but that won't stop me from reassembling the rest of the truck. The core support went back on without a glitch, which meant radiator, condenser, and wiring harness could get sorted. Other big ticket items like the k and air intake went right back into place, followed by the headlights and grill. Now it's starting to look like that awesome truck I remember. I did take some time to knock the chunks of rust off and repaint the awesome Randy Ellis Designs front bumper before reattaching it. 
Now, it was time to wait for a call from the Dodge dealer for that one pesky part. It's go time. The power steering pump finally came in, so I slapped it on and topped off the fluid. Mopar recommends a 50-50 mix for the coolant, so I did, always with distilled water, and filled the radiator. Jasper recommends using conventional or non-synthetic oil for the break-in process, so I filled it up with factory spec 5W20. All right, so this is the big moment. I'm in town literally for today. We're in between shoots. We've just finished one part of a Dirt Everyday shoot. We're catching a plane tomorrow for the rest of it. But the Dodge dealer called and said the power steering pump was in, so I went ahead and grabbed it, threw it on. We checked the fluids. Everything looks pretty good. We gotta watch everything now. Let's get inside this thing and try to fire it up and see what we got. Oh my goodness gracious, I can't even believe this. Now, you don't wanna just start an engine that's been dry like this just and let it fire up. You want to build some oil pressure. So what I'm going to do, and I just happen to know that on Dodge and I think Ford as well, um, you can you can either just unplug all of the uh, coils and so and then crank it and it won't fire. But they also have a feature where if you just push the gas pedal to the floor, the computer senses something's up and it doesn't actually fire the engine. So we're going to go ahead and get the engine on. Turn the key on. This is the first time that I've had the battery attached to this in a while, so that's kind of exciting even. And push my foot to the floor, and let's build some oil pressure before we try to fire it. So we'll just do a quick check. See, let's make sure our oil's good. Oil's good. So by doing that, you just make sure that you get some oils, oil circulating throughout the engine before you just fire it up and let it rev up. So now, <laughs> let's start it. All right, here we go, first start. Here we go. There's the oil pressure we've been looking for. Boy, that thing just fired right up. Stokes, well listen to that. Yeah, I'm freaking stoked. This is amazing. The install went great. This thing sounds awesome. I mean, the throttle response just sitting here and the engine hasn't even been broken in yet is actually even better than it was before. So there's a lot going on here. I can't wait to get this thing out on the road, but right now I just gotta share. Wow, like you get that feeling like, Dang, we did that. I did that right there. Come on. Yeah, let's go drive it. So we're behind the wheel of the truck and I'll be honest with you, I've put a couple hundred miles on it before I turn these cameras on. I'm in the middle of what you would call the break-in process and it's going great. At about 500 miles, they recommend that you change the oil and then just use the vehicle uh, like you would normally use it. So I'm taking it kind of easy on it. I wanna hot dog it a little bit just to show you guys how awesome it is and it's just just so much fun to be behind the wheel of this thing again. I really do love this truck. And that kind of speaks to the reason why I wanted to replace the engine rather than just replace the truck. Like that's the kind of one of the, the main points or why I think the, the Jasper engine, remanufactured engine is the way to go 
for a lot of people. Now say you have a vehicle for a few years, you know, you've done the maintenance, you've done all that stuff. If you do the math, if your engine fails and you just go buy another vehicle, then you have to incur all of those extra costs of getting a new vehicle, the insurance, all of that stuff. When if you like your vehicle, like I've been in this vehicle for a couple years now and it would take me a lot to build a truck like this. So it's actually way less money to just replace the engine in it. And that's the way, you know, you could rationalize this for a lot of people. Now, does that equation work for everybody? No, but it definitely works for a lot of people. So you get that value from doing a remanufactured engine and keeping the vehicle that you already own. So now let's stretch out this truck's legs and I'll show you some of the other reasons other than just the fact this thing looks awesome of what I like about it. This thing actually handles pretty, it's pretty fun. Now it's got 37 inch tires, it's a big tall truck and for all intents and purposes, it should be a pig. But I actually really love hustling it around on these mountain roads and I can't wait to see what it can do off-road. I've only barely scratched the surface of what this thing can do off-road when I've been using it for work and dirt every day. So now it's mine. We get to go on adventures and I'm gonna. Listen to that sound. Do you hear that? Oh man. This thing is awesome. Now, one of the things I learned about Jasper engines and transmissions as a company, as I started going through this process, I would call a couple guys um, and they're just all nice. It's a employee owned company. So everybody's like, like oddly upbeat and happy to be there. Now I'm a sarcastic Los Angeles guy and it was weird at first, but then you just kind of get to the next guy. And then I talked to the tech support guys on the phone, you know, just to get some advice on the install. And you just go from one nice guy on the phone to another, to another. And you're like, okay, I get it. They're happy. It's a good company. And I dig that. This thing in the dirt is where it belongs. Because of that. Oh, it's so tough during the break-in process to just kind of feather it through the dirt here, but boy, is this fun. I think this is where this truck shines. <laughs> a blast or what? Are you kidding me? I can't wait till we can give it full beans. So there it is. This Dodge Ram got a new lease on life thanks to a Jasper Engines and Transmissions Hemi Heart Transplant. Stay tuned for more videos of future adventures in this rig and until next time, enjoy your drive. <laughs>